The figure of a sexless youth was frozen in mid-skip with a silly grin on its stone lips. Hi there, ma'am. Well, hello. What can I do for you? I'm looking for a man. You disappoint me, my dear. For one foolish moment, I thought. But never mind. Aren't you going to tell me your name? George. George Stobart, ma'am. How sweet! I once had a stable boy called George. I am Lady Piermont. The common reaction is to kneel and stutter, but it's not obligatory. A real lady? I mean, you're an honest-to-God aristocrat? Oh, I don't know about that. Few of my ancestors are honest, not even to God. I can trace my family back to the Normans, but don't let that intimidate you, George. Beneath that impressive pedigree, I'm just flesh and blood. The blood may be blue, but the flesh is the plump beef of old England, so to speak. You appear distracted, George. Is there any way I can help you? I'm looking for a murderer. Good heavens! You're a private detective. That's correct, ma'am. What's the term you Americans use? It's on the tip of my tongue. I believe what you're thinking of is Dick. Precisely. Have you come across a man who calls himself Khan? I am familiar with only one person named Khan. Genghis Khan, the legendary Mongol barbarian chieftain? No, darling. Kevin. Kevin Khan? I never heard of him. I'd be most surprised if you had, darling. He's a pharmacist in Hemel Hempstead. Organizes fundraising for the Rotarians. Lovely man. Does he have a scar on his cheek? I really wouldn't know, sweetie. Would you distract the clerk while I borrow a key? Are you asking me to aid you in a criminal act, darling? I guess I am. Good heavens, I must be dreaming. I don't think so, ma'am. Now tell me, why do you want to get into that room? I'm a detective. We do these things. Now you're being ridiculous. If you can't supply me with a plausible explanation, I'm not interested. Are you here in Paris on vacation? No, darling, I'm on holiday. I needed to get away after Algy's funeral. I didn't realize you were mourning the loss of a loved one. I'm not. He was my husband. I'm sorry to hear about your husband's death. You wouldn't be if you knew him, my dear. It gave me the opportunity to take a well-deserved holiday. Daphne suggested a change of scenery. Paris, she said. A wild romance is just what you need to take your mind off the inquest. Well, the closest I came to romance was being wooed by a drunken Breton chef. I must say I was disappointed with his cock van. Not at all what I was expecting. I was thinking of cutting my holiday short, packing my bags and heading back to Hemel Hempstead. That was until last night. What happened to you last night? I was stricken, Mr. Sturbot. Cupid's arrow has cleft my bosom. They couldn't really miss. It was just as I'd always imagined it should be. The intimacy of candlelight. Romantic music tinkling across the room. And then, a stranger's glance. Those brooding eyes, that suave manner, those tight trousers. He was the man I'd been waiting for all my life. I'm glad he finally turned up after all these years. Ah, but it wasn't to be. He was merely toying with my affections. And if I ever catch up with him, he's dead. Who was the guy who led you on? His name is Merlin. I really need that key bad. I'm not convinced I should help you, darling. Do you know what this is? At a guess, I'd say it was a clown's nose. That's right. It was worn as a disguise by a vicious killer. Good heavens, are you trying to alarm me? It's true. He uses the name Khan. Do you recognize the man in this photograph? My God, it's him! That's Merlin! She represented everything I loved about the English. The lady was totally deranged. Merlin? You mean King Arthur's wizard? Good heavens, no! Monsieur Merlin is a fellow guest. 
He's the man I've been telling you about. That's the man who spurned me. Can you think of any use for this tool, ma'am? Oh, I can think of someone I'd like to use it on. Does this tissue mean anything to you? Good God, no! I just thought the smell might be familiar. Please, darling, put it away. I'm no shrinking violet, but that object makes me feel quite queasy. The man you know as Merlin is a fake. What do you mean, sweetie? He's a murderer. He also uses the name Khan. I am shocked, Mr. Stobart. Shaken. I took him to be a gentleman, a man of honor. Do you know, I'd rather like to assist you in stitching him up. When did you last see Merlin? It was no more than an hour ago. He came downstairs and spoke to that clerk chappy. Something passed hands. I couldn't see what exactly. A briefcase? No, smaller than that. A bundle of papers, perhaps. The clerk put it in the hotel safe and Merlin went out. Are you sure you saw Merlin putting documents in the safe? Yes, darling. Positive. I wonder what they were. Obviously something of great importance. Yeah. I'd sure like to get my hands on whatever it is. I'll bet they had something to do with Plantar's briefcase. Has Merlin returned to the hotel? No, he hasn't. Are you going to search his room? If I could get in there, I would. And that's why you want the key? Yes, ma'am. I shouldn't think my feminine charms would be much use in this case. But a good dose of English arrogance might do the trick. I say! You there! Flunky! Oui, madame. Listen carefully. You do understand English, don't you? But of course, madame. Good. I wish to deposit some jewellery for safekeeping. I understand. Are you quite certain? Oh, bien sûr, madame. Over to you, my dear. There was no one registered under the name of Khan. If the killer was staying here, he'd used a different pseudonym. There was no one. If the killer was... It was a key ring bearing one large brass key and a tag which read, Hotel Ubu. I want some information. Who are you? The police? I'm conducting a private investigation. Ah, I know only too well what you mean. That is one of the drawbacks of the catering business. When people book into an hotel, they leave their morals at home, no? I'd like to retrieve something from your safe. Ah, oui, monsieur. May I see some form of identification? Uh, like what? A driving license, perhaps? I don't drive. Your passport? I don't have it with me. I could show you my operation, Scar. I'm sorry, monsieur. I must have some form of unique ID. You won't find a more unique ID than my Scar. I'm sorry. I must insist on a more traditional identification. Rats! Do you know a man named Plantau? No, monsieur. Do you recognize this red nose? No, monsieur. Do you recognize the man in this photograph? Yes, monsieur. That man is one of our guests. What name? <laughs> I cannot tell you that. What do you make of this tissue? Do you wish me to dispose of it for you, monsieur? Hey, no! It could be useful. I'm holding on to this. <laughs> As you wish, monsieur. Perhaps you would like a little plastic baggie to keep it in? Nah, it's fine the way it is. Hey, shake my hand. I'd rather not, monsieur. I'm still sore from the shock administered by one of the guests. He was secretly concealing an electrical device in the palm of his hand. Practical jokes are so puerile, don't you think? Oh, yeah, sure. Thanks for your help, buddy.
The sign on the door read 21. Maybe it wasn't the right room, but this was the right key. It was a massive mahogany wardrobe. A cabinet stood beside the bed. The cabinet was empty, but it smelt of onions. No kidding, it really did. The window looked out over a narrow alley surrounded by high walls. There was nothing in the wardrobe apart from a vague, lingering smell of camphor. 